Oxford Read and Discover, Level 4. Animals in Art by Richard Northcote. Read by John McAndrew. Published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2010. Introduction. Look at these two pictures of a hare. One is a photo and the other is a painting. The photo is interesting, but in the painting, the artist really helps us to look at the hair. We see its long claws, its fur, and its whiskers. What animals do we see in art? Where can we see animals in art? What are the oldest animal pictures? Discover! Now read and discover more about animals in art all around the world. Chapter 1 Animal Shapes Animals are different from people. Animals can't talk but they can do many other things. Some animals can run faster than people. Most birds and insects can fly. Cats can climb trees better than people. Here are drawings of a cat and a dog by an artist called Leonardo da Vinci. He was born in Florence now in Italy. He wanted to show an animal's shape when it does different things. The dog is sitting. The cat is washing. Their shapes are interesting because they are different from ours. This painting is by a Korean artist called Pyon Sang Pyok. It shows two cats. The cats are not friends. Maybe they are going to fight. The artist shows this in their shapes. He used grey and black inks for the cats to show their fur. Their fur is nice and soft. Many artists draw pictures of animals because their shapes are interesting and beautiful. Discover! Sometimes when artists paint animals, they first do a fast drawing. Then, later, they look at their drawing and do their painting more slowly. Chapter 2 The Oldest Animal Pictures A long time ago, People lived in caves. They had no paper. They painted animals on the walls of their caves. In a cave in Spain, there's an amazing painting of a bison. This painting is about 15,000 years old. Discover! A girl called Maria Sanz de Sautuola discovered the cave paintings at Altamira in 1879. She was only nine years old. She was in the caves with her father. There are beautiful paintings of giraffes and other animals in some caves in Libya. They are not as old as the cave paintings in Spain, but they are interesting because they show changes in our world. When people did these paintings, about 8,000 years ago, there were giraffes and trees in this part of Africa. Now it's a desert. In the Nazca Desert in Peru, you can see amazing pictures of animals, but you have to be in a plain. About 2,000 years ago, people drew giant pictures on the ground. They drew monkeys, birds, and spiders. Some of these pictures are bigger than a playground. Chapter 3 
Wild Animals When artists paint a wild animal, they sometimes show the animal in its home. For example, they paint the animal in the jungle or in the mountains. In this painting, we see a stag, and we also see its home in the mountains. This painting is realistic. This means that the stag looks like a real stag. It's almost like a photo. The painting is by a British artist called Edwin Landseer. He painted it in 1851. In 1891, a French artist called Henri Rousseau painted a picture of a tiger. The painting is called Tiger in a Tropical Storm, Surprised. The artist shows the tiger and its home in the jungle. Most of this painting is trees, other plants and rain. We see a tiger and we also see the tiger's world. The tiger is surprised because there's a storm. Do you think this is a realistic painting? Chapter 4. People and Pets Not all animals in art are wild animals. Some of them are people's pets. Francisco de Goya was a Spanish artist. In about 1790, he painted a boy and his pets. The boy has a black and white bird on a piece of string. He also has some cats, and they are watching the bird. Paintings of people, like this painting, are called portraits. Francisco de Goya painted lots of portraits. This picture is by a Japanese artist called Kobayashi Eitaku. How many pets can you see? There's a dog and a rabbit, but is it a real rabbit? A long time ago in India, rich people liked hunting with birds. In this painting, we see the Emperor Jahangir and his pet falcon. They are going to hunt small animals. The artist used real gold to colour some of the Emperor's clothes. Discover! This painting is very small. It's only 14 centimetres tall. Very small pictures like this are called miniatures. Chapter 5. Animals Outside In 2005, people in Ottawa, in Canada, saw a spider next to a museum. Was it a small spider, like a spider in the bathtub? No, it was very big. This spider was a sculpture by an American artist called Louise Bourgeois. It was almost 10 metres high. Louise Bourgeois was born in France in 1911. When she made this sculpture, she was more than 90 years old. There are other big sculptures of spiders by Louise Bourgeois in Spain, Russia and South Korea. Native American artists make tall statues called totem poles. They put sculptures of birds and other animals on the poles. Totem poles are made of wood from very tall trees. Discover! The tallest totem pole in the world is in Alert Bay in Canada. It's about 56 metres tall. In Barcelona, in Spain, there's a big statue of a lizard. Is this a realistic statue? Not really. When people see this lizard, 
they usually smile. It looks like a big toy. Chapter 6 Animals in Books Do you like learning about animals? Today we can watch animals on television or look at photos of animals in books or on the internet. A long time ago, before television or photos, people only looked at drawings of animals in books. There are often drawings of animals in children's books. In a book called Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, a girl called Alice meets a rabbit and lots of other animals. The drawings in this book are very nice, but they are not realistic because the animals are wearing clothes. A long time ago, there were artists who studied animals from all around the world. They wrote books about them and drew the pictures in the books. One of these artists was John Audubon. He was born in 1785 and he lived in the USA. He drew lots of birds and other animals. Discover! John Audubon drew all the different types of bird in North America and he put the drawings in a book. This took 20 years. Chapter 7 Animal Symbols a long time ago, people used pictures of animals in writing. In ancient Egyptian writing, there are symbols of animals like birds and snakes. Sometimes the symbols mean the word for the animal. When they are next to another symbol, they can mean a different word. Animals are sometimes the symbols of countries. The tiger is the symbol of South Korea, and the rooster is the symbol of France. Sometimes you can see an animal symbol on a country's coins or stamps. Does your country have an animal symbol? In China, all the years have an animal symbol. There are 12 symbols. For example, the year of the rabbit was from 1999 to 2000. The year of the sheep was from 2003 to 2004. These animal symbols can also mean different types of people. For example, people who are born in the year of the rabbit are kind. Do you think it's true? This Chinese sculpture of a sheep looks like a real sheep. Maybe the artist made it because people who are born in the year of the sheep are good at art. Chapter 8 Different Animals Animals in art are not always realistic. Sometimes Artists have different ideas. An artist from Romania called Constantine Brancusi made this sculpture of a seal in 1924. It's not a realistic sculpture, but the artist used a stone called marble to show his idea of a seal. The marble is grey, like a seal. It shines like a seal's fur when it's wet. The lines in the marble look like the water around the seal when it swims. The artist used hard, dry stone to show a soft, wet seal. Discover! Constantine Brancusi liked things made of stone. His table was a big piece of stone. A German painter called Franz Marc was interested in shapes and colours. In 1914, 
he painted a picture of an elephant, a horse, and a cow. Their colours are not realistic. The elephant's head is red, and part of the horse is blue. They are like animals in a dream. Franz Mark made a nice coloured pattern with the shapes of the three animals. Chapter Nine: Teapots and Toys. It's fun to look at sculptures of animals in a museum, but usually you can't touch them. Sometimes, artists make things like teapots or toys with animal shapes. They are all animals in art, but you can touch them. Here's a sculpture. Of a zebra, you can touch it because it's really a teapot. It's a teapot in the shape of a zebra. It's by an American artist called Christy Cruz Dunn. She makes teapots in the shape of other animals too. A long time ago, an artist made three little toys: a bird, a hedgehog. And a lion. All the toys had wheels. When young children play with toys, they often break them. The artist knew this, so these toys are strong. They are made of stone. The artist lived in Susa, now in Iran. We don't know the artist's name. The bird doesn't have wheels now. But the toys look nice. They're about three thousand years old, so they are some of the oldest toys in the world. Chapter Ten: Dragons and Unicorns. There are lots of stories and pictures of animals that aren't real, like dragons and unicorns. Sometimes they are more exciting than real animals. Dragons have long claws, and their tails are like a lizard's tail. This Japanese dragon is long and thin, like a snake. It's big and angry. Maybe the people are scared. Discover. Japanese dragons. Always have three claws on each foot. In ancient China, a dragon with five claws was the symbol of the emperor. A unicorn looks like a white horse, but it has a horn on its head. In this old French tapestry, two women are with a unicorn. There are other animals too. The animal in front of the women. Looks like a monkey. What other animals can you see? Think about all the animals in this book. What's your favorite animal in art?